Well, here we are, right in the middle of Advent. So I decided I'd plant myself right by the church's Advent wreath for this midweek moment. And I couldn't restrain myself. I lit candles one, two, and three, representing Christ our hope, Christ the way, and Christ our joy. Strictly speaking, I should have waited until Sunday for joy. But oh my goodness, there's been too much strict speaking in this pandemic election here, hasn't there? Right now, I need to have more light and more joy, and I hope you won't begrudge me the early lighting. When I was a baby, my parents and I lived in Sweden for about a year and a half when my father's job transferred him to Stockholm. He always remembered going out for lunch with some of his Swedish co-workers one winter day and how they crossed to the other side of the street before walking down the block to the restaurant, whereupon they crossed the street again. The restaurant, you see, was on the same side of the street as their office, and my father, being a shortest distance between two points is a straight line kind of guy, asked why they'd done that. The sun is shining on that side of the street, was the answer. Just for fun, I looked up the times of sunrise and sunset in Stockholm for Thursday, 8.33 and 2.47, respectively. Nunavut, in Canada's far north, is even more extreme. Thursday sunrise is 10.58 a.m. and sunset is 2.03. Winter nights get cold and long and dark. No wonder they wanted to cross to the sunny side of the street, even if it was just for a minute or two. This long period of pandemic-induced separation from friends and all the limits on our activities has been hard on people, which partly explains why so many people weren't willing to give up gathering around Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, some of the conditions that seem to be worst for spreading this very contagious virus, eating and drinking together with friends and singing, are some of the things that people look forward to most at this cold, dark time of year. Even in Ulster County, the number of infections is climbing daily, and public health specialists fear that people eating, drinking, and making merry in ways somewhat approaching what they always do during the holidays will be like spraying gasoline on the viral fire. We are all challenged to put aside our habits, our customs, our family and church traditions this year. And you know what? There's a kind of good news, bad news aspect to that. The bad news is that you can't do some things you're used to that you really like. And you can't get together with a church and with friends and with family in person. But the good news is that you don't have to run yourself ragged doing stuff just because you've always done it that way. And you can settle in to focus on what the real good news of the season is. Our Christmas Eve service this year will be pre-recorded and shared online. On the one hand, it's sad that we won't gather together under the church's roof to sing and hear the familiar gospel stories and light our candles. On the other hand, we will be sharing the familiar gospel stories and hymns with a maybe even wider congregation from points near and far including people who would not have been able to come out in the cold and dark. BYOC, bring your own candle this year. Which brings me back to the Advent candles, which bit by bit, week by week, bring more light into the December darkness. The Gospel reading for this Sunday is from the first chapter of John, telling how John the Baptist prepared people for Jesus. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Even almost 2,000 years ago, Christ did not appear with the instant flip of a light switch. It took patience and faithful witness by John and others to prepare the way for the Lord. When the darkness is deep all around, your single light makes a difference when it shines. When the world is deep in fear and anger and sorrow, your prayers 
your patience, your joyful and loving witness to the light of Jesus, God's word made flesh in a dark time in a distant land, make a difference. You may not be seeing instant results, but day by day, prayer by prayer, candle by candle, the light of Christ is coming into this world. Thanks be to God.